Please, I'm, I'm going to start with Grace Fisher. Let's bring up Grace Fisher. <laughs> Grace, thank you so much. Please welcome the director of the film, Lynn Montgomery. Lynn, thank you for joining us. Grace's mom is here and dad. And, um, to moderate this conversation, our good friend, she's going to be performing here on Tuesday night. She could tell you more about her show. Um, don't miss that. Um, she is, is the most important voice, one of the more important voices on our selection committee. Our movies are what they are, thanks to her, Anita Hollander. Glad to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I look forward to your dance tomorrow. I hope you'll I hope you'll do it. Yeah, that's great. Um, wow, I'm so excited to be sitting here, and because we on the selection committee have been sort of with you for a couple of years, we've seen your work, we've seen this. Um, with for me, the the film brings up so many questions, and I I don't want to find out that. You know, the problem is you've probably a been asked every one of these <laughs> questions. So, um, but what I, I wanted to start with something about that Earl said and that you talked about the gift inside of what happens to us. Because when you said that it, you hadn't um, composed the symphony, you, you hadn't done as much composing until afterwards, and, and it's funny because when I went through cancer twice in my 20s, and so, that was when I, I, I had been used to being interpreting other people's work, and that was when I started to write. So it was really wonderful to see that and see what you're doing and how deliberate you have to go note for note. And the part of me was saying, yes, but when you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning with a melody in your head, how do you remember it tomorrow? And things like that. Because um, you can't just write it down. And, and so all of these things were floating through my head. Can you t tell me a little bit about how you feel about the gifts of, of disability and what we go through? Yeah. Oops. The gifts of disability. Well, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is my my family and um, their. Um, I have so much more time with them than I ever did before. I would have never, I think, gone to New York in my twenties with my sister and both my parents. I'm so thankful and blessed. To be here, there's um, I have so much more time for things that are really important. Um, so yeah, thank but you. Yeah, my family. I guess my family is the the big answer to that. Well, it's the it's so interesting how you packed so much into your life leading up to it, so that you had the training to know what a cello is like to play, know what a guitar is like to play, know what a keyboard is like to play. It's like you had all the tools that built up that you could then use them all and then your hands, your ability to use your hands are taken away. And it's like, well, I'm still going to do it. And I, I just, I think it's so wonderful. And, and I want to turn to your director here because here's the thing. I thought it was a real directed really well. Seeing it again on a big screen, because you know when we're looking at these things, we're looking at on our computers and our phones and stuff. To see it on the big screen, I, I saw how the rhythm and the flow and the way you connected that with the story, with the music, I really was impressed with that. So it made me wonder, was it your idea to make the documentary? I don't even know whose idea it was to do this, although it was like the most worthy project ever made, I think. <laughs> but um, did, did you come on board or did you call her and say, I want to direct a film about your you life? You know, this whole thing was so organic. I don't even think I could answer that question. I don't know if Gracie could either. It just, I, I've known Gracie for many years. 
So she was a part of my world. My daughter is Gracie's age, Gracie's friend. So it was um, the synchronicity in this. The, the it, it just, you know, it was time. It w the movie wasn't made until like a few years after she um, became quadriplegic. And it kind of just needed its own time, I think, for Gracie to be ready. It needed its own time. I mean, I had thought about, you know, that somebody should do it. But it just, uh, the time came when I realized that somebody is me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I just want to say, though, you know, watching it again, I've seen it so many times, but it's been a little while since I've seen it on the big screen. And I have nothing but gratitude for this family. They opened their doors. They said, nothing is off limits. <laughs> um, and I think that that's why the whole movie seems seamless, because the making of the movie was seamless. Um, and it had its own melody. And it was just finding and honoring that melody, because it, it was always there in the story. And um, so I, I just felt like um, I was following the bliss. <laughs> I totally felt that. Um, when the, all of the different voices of people saying things that flowed into each other early on in the movie and then later with the pictures and of the kids. And I just, I felt that you captured the music, of the rhythm of, of her life, of her story, and I really am impressed with that oh, thank incredibly. You. Thank you. And mom, say mom, you're next. <laughs> um, so, as I said, the story resonates with me in many, many ways, and my own mother had to deal with so much. And in the show that I'm doing on Tuesday, Spectacular Falls, I wrote all the so 17 songs that I wrote, but the, one of them is to my mom, because, and it's basically, you gave me life, you saved my life, and then you taught me to save my own life, because she did. I mean, she honestly did, and I, I loved uh, watching you and that your honesty and you allowed us to see some excoriating moments and without, you know, without being afraid to let that happen. Uh, I just, the idea that you sometimes have to scream at people in the hospital and be called a witch or something, I mean, my mom had to do that. <laughs> and um, they called it, well, watch out for Mrs. Hollander, she's scary, but and she wasn't. She's an incredibly charming woman. So, can you talk a little bit about um, the kind of uh, uh, struggle you had to go with w in through all of the adventure, so to speak, in the hospitals and with the doctors and stuff like that? I, you know, you're one of the first I think that's asked that because of your personal experience. I think so. I was a physical therapist for 20 years, but. So those people that got all aggro, I, I didn't get it. But after this happened with Grace and every single thing was a fight. I mean, when we first got home, I had problems getting her ventilator equipment. And I thought, for of all things, like it helps her breathe. I just don't understand. And so I think that when you fight day after day, the little bear in you comes out a little more. <laughs> Some people might say bitch, but the bear, the mama bear comes out. <laughs> and um, it was hard for my daughters to see that um, because they weren't used to me being annoyed. Um, but I think that <laughs> I <laughs> like to advocate for the other parents because I can, because I can. And I think, you know, I have a master's degree in physical therapy. I should be able to get this and I should be able to get equipment and it should be easy but it's not. So if I had a hard time with it, well, for goodness sake, like if English isn't your first language and you're having a hard time getting your equipment, I mean, I have m much more empathy for, um, and I think that's why Gracie and I love these families whose children were born with a disability that we feel so grateful that we had 16 years of incredible health and it gives us a perspective of how much was available to Grace that is not available afterwards. And I love this community center. I love this community center. I want to bring this community center to Santa Barbara. I, this is the vision, Gracie. This is the vision. I love what you have here. Um, and so it's including all people. And I really, really love that. And I see how much is lacking for Grace and so many other people in our community that deserve to have 
an active, beautiful life if they're just given the opportunity. So luckily, you know, we have this opportunity with you. And I thank you for having us here. So thank you. And thank you, Lynn, for making this movie. This is so much our pleasure to have you. You had the vocabulary, but then you found yourself in a situation where you were the mom, and it's so different. And I, I'm glad that we got to talk to about that a little. And one last thing before we, we open up the questions, because I can't just hog all the questions, but um, I don't need to be fixed. I loved when you said that because I can't tell you how many times that has gone through my head of, um, I like myself just the way I am. And you know, it's like, oh, you know, there's all these new great prosthetics. And, and yeah, 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 I get you. Now. And what if I did Tai Chi on one leg? Is that OK with you? Because that's how I feel. And I just, um, I loved hearing you say it. I think, you, I think it speaks to a lot of people. Is there any more you want to say about, oh, really, the big question, the last question was, there's got to there's a lot of time since the movie happened till now. So you must have been doing a lot of, we, we did see the animated, that wonderful, the short, which are, we're also showing. But are there other things that you want to tell us about that you're working on or that you've done since then? Sure. Yeah. So right now, I'm <laughs> finishing up a music composition degree at um, UCSB, so I'm in my last quarter. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, I love to paint in my free time. Um, my little sister is back from UC Berkeley, and so we have been spending a lot of time together as a family. Um, and yeah, so that's that's what I've pursued. I'm in the po process of pursuing, um, and there is another part to that. Okay, think it through. <laughs> well, oh, so the um, the foundation that I have, I have a lot more um, plans for too. But once I have the the time for that, now I have to kind of pick and choose more what I want to invest my energy towards. Just because I don't have as much energy, I guess, time as I as I used to. Um, so, but I put on a annual winter concert where I feature some of my music, and um, the proceeds from that show go towards funding my foundation. So, yeah. Fantastic. And UCSB is University of California something Berkeley? <laughs> Santa Barbara. Okay, yes. great. <laughs> All right. So she's near you because she's in at UC Berkeley. She's in. So UC Berkeley is actually like a couple hours north. It's five hours north, but Emily graduated in public health up oh, there. So little sister's here. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so good yeah. to have you here. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. I'm going to circle back because you were talking about, um, oh, your uniqueness. Like, just take me for who I am. And I love that because I think that every child that's born should feel loved, that your mother gave you that love, that I had that love for Gracie. So when her disability happened, that didn't take away her love, her uniqueness. And I've heard um, parents uh, in the background say, oh, well, when my kid is out of the wheelchair, be all, they'll be okay. And I'm so mortified by that because that child needs to know that they're absolutely okay right where they're at. And of course, we'd love Gracie to dance again, but she dances in a different way. And, and that is magical and beautiful on its own. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much. It's so true. And that's what I encourage in everybody is that look what made you unique. So hello, it's really great. And <laughs> let that shine. So it may seem, well, I'm just glad that you <laughs> said that. And I wasn't trying to ignore you over here. I still think you're the best. <laughs> so maybe we should open it up so that I don't uh, spend all the time with the questions. Do people have questions? And I don't have my glasses on. So um, maybe if you raise your hand, uh, it's, Isaac can get up to you. Thank you. And thank you so much. This um, this has been, uh, I'm s 
I'm on the screening committee as well, and I really was, we were all thrilled that you came back and that we had this opportunity in person um, to express how moving your story is. And I wonder if you could give us a little bit more description of what the f how the foundation works and, and what you're doing. Besides, I mean, I think it's extraordinary, frankly, that uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, that that was what you asked for, and I'd speak so much to who you are. Thank you. Um, so when I was in rehab, music and art therapy was something um, that was so therapeutic for me because that was such a hard time in my life, and I remember... Well, looking back on screen, that was the first time that I saw it with subtitles, and I saw what I was saying, and I was like, dang, I'm like being kind of rude to my parents. <laughs> um, but music and art, that was really my moments of joy, and we didn't really have anything in my community back in, in Santa Barbara. Um, focused on um, adaptive arts. And so that's kind of where my passion for, for it came from, from my own experiences. And so, um, yeah, right now we have four programs um, that we put on. Adaptive music and art and dance classes, and as well as um, a social program for kids with um, of all abilities, because uh, our abilities are a lot different in a lot of ways, but um, the different isn't any worse. It's just uh, different than expected. So, I want to say how inspiring you are and how beautiful your family is. And thank you for sharing your story here. Um, I was particularly touched just seeing what an extrovert you were and, and how you went through that period of anxiety, which so many people suffer with, but not, haven't necessarily gone through all that you went through and just wondering how you got through that. Um, and yeah, how you, how you managed that journey, um, part of your journey. Yeah. and. I think, I think in, well, anxiety is, is not something that I've necessarily solved or anything. I think it's, well, I know it's something that I um, live with every day. I just have to manage it a little bit differently. Um, and, um, but again, that answer is music and art, I feel like, just putting that nervous energy into something that I love really helped. Um, and also, too, um, just doing something that I uh, breaks me out of my comfort zone every day. Maybe that's just five minutes outside or just um, a couple minutes doing something that pushes me a little bit because that five minutes outside turns into eventually being able to go to brunch with a friend or all these little moments add up. And I think that was something that um, really helped me. Thank you for that, by the way. Thank you. We have a question on that side. Then we'll take one over here. I don't know if Gracie said it in the movie, but she said that it was more paralyzing. Her anxiety was more paralyzing than the fact that she couldn't move her limbs. Do you say that in the movie? You do, yeah. No, um, no, I said it. Yes, go ahead. That's, that was the hardest part of the journey. Hi, Grace. Lissy, this is, this is my <laughs> husband's first cousin. Thank you for coming, Lissy. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Um, so I wanted to ask you about the clips of you playing guitar in the film. And a part of me was thinking, did you ever think that this many people would see those videos? Mm -hmm. 
but they do seem like they were shot in a certain period. So I was kind of curious if you made them just because you were practicing or if it was part of an audition. And um, did you compose them? And are you planning to do an album? Because I feel like you're kind of a rocker. So I'm kind of curious if you're going to move away from classical. Thank you, Lissy. I'll answer part of that. So all of that was footage that Gracie took an iPad and she would watch her finger. So she did it purely to practice. It was nothing that was ever to be shown to the public. And I actually lost that iPad when we were in the ICU. And so when I found that iPad and I saw her music, it was a hidden jewel for me that I got to see her play again because she it was never good enough. When I when she was practicing at home, I'd say, hey, Gracie, I like that. Can I videotape? Not, it's not ready yet. It was never good enough. So. So those, the only footage we have is her practice footage. So thank you, Lissy. And my favorite footage is the last with her face mask mm -hmm. because it fits her personality. And, um, and I, I love that footage. We should do that. But her Winter Music Showcase, I think, I think she's going to include a little guitar part that she wrote, I think, because I kind of hear her writing it. But are you? I, don't, I never know with her. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask if my face mask gave that away. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I think my mom answered that question, which is one thing that bothers me a little bit. Um, in general, I'm also appreciative of that, too, because there's, like, so many conversations that I don't want to have with uh, people, and she just takes it over. <laughs> Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Album. Oh, an album, an album. Well, eventually I want to, like, put my music together. And, I don't know, yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah. We have a question over here. Gracie, hi again. Uh, I got to meet you earlier. I had the pleasure of meeting you earlier with Nick. Um, you are such, you're a hero. You're an inspiration. I'm nervous to even address you directly after no seeing what I just saw, and I only saw half of it. The film was exceptional. I don't even know what else to say. Magical, powerful. I mean, everything you could ever want. Um, and it's a true story, and it's it just motivates. And I'm so happy to have known you. I hope we can have a relationship and get involved and do whatever we can do because for me, this is life changing. This is absolutely amazing and life changing. So, I mean, God bless you, your family, everything. I don't even have the words. I'll come up with them at, at another time, but I'm sure we'll, we'll have a relationship, but you are absolutely incredible. Thank so you. That's all to you. Thank you. And since this yeah. is a film festival, I did want to say that we have a lot to thank you for <laughs> by putting thank it you, all Lynn. into a film. <laughs> um, I want to say something about the film. We premiered at the Santa Barbara Film Festival just like three weeks before the shutdown. <laughs> and um, well, there were many festivals that we were going to around the world. There was a lot of momentum and excitement. And then we shut down for two years. <laughs> so um, so the film, it has played in, in some festivals. And usually it's, it's one like audience favorite or best film or best character or something. And um, audiences have really responded to it. But now I have to get busy and bring it to a bigger world. So if anybody's a distributor out there, <laughs> that's the next thing I have to concentrate on. Because now this will be our last you know, official festival. And now, because I was holding back also so it could be in more festivals when it did open back up. But we do have to get it out to the world because, um, you know, this movie is life-changing for everyone. You know, people with disabilities, mental, physical, daily people. One of my favorite things is, is our, our premiere in Santa Barbara. This uh, fellow came up. Everybody always wants to talk to Gracie afterwards. So there's a long line of them waiting to talk to Gracie. And there was this guy, and he had quite a few tattoos. Some of them might have been scary. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, he waited and waited and waited. 
And he didn't get to Gracie because she was swamped. So he got to me and he said, I just want to tell you that this movie has given me a gratitude adjustment. And I mean, I think that's a gift that, that, uh, that it can give to the world. It really, it's a gratitude adjustment. And we can all use that all the time. Just like in Nick's wonderful movie, it comes at the end with, you know, joy comes from gratitude, not gratitude comes from joy. And this family is filled with gratitude every day. That's where their joy comes from. It's all gratitude for all the gifts that Gracie has, all the gifts the family has. And so make that's why making this movie was maybe effortless because I just got on the gratitude train. <laughs> Hey, um, so starting off, I think you're super cool and very wise beyond your years, and the film made my eyes a little sweaty. I don't know um, what was going on. Um, in terms of timeline, how long did it take you from your 17th birthday through that period of hardship to get to the place where, you know, you can proudly say, I don't need to be fixed? I, I just want to know more about how long that journey took you. So it'll be eight years this December 21st, just to tell you the timeline of, of how long she's been in a chair. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's been almost eight years, and I was in rehab for about eight months. And um, when I was initially in the hospital, I was never told uh, that I wouldn't walk again, and I think that um, we didn't really know because this diagnosis is so new. So it was definitely like a slower adjustment rather rather than just being hit with this and then being told like, okay, this is it. You're never going to walk again. You have to figure it out. Um, but Craig Hospital, the hospital that I was at was a big part in helping me learn how to live life in a wheelchair. There's so much adaptive equipment out there. Um, and I think you saw from the movie, like it's really hard for me to sit still. And like my sister and my nurses know, like it's, uh, I run over a lot of toes. And I think that's one thing that they like about me not being in my power chair is that they can push me around. Um, and so, yeah, I need to always have my mind devoted in to something, whether that's music or painting. I really love my garden, which that was something that would annoy my sister and I growing up. Like, my mom would be like, do you know what that type of flower is? And now I'm the one that's like, do you know why? There's so many bulbs in Central Park. It's not, it doesn't get cold enough in California. We love your city, by the way. So happy to be here. We love, love it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, last two questions. Oh, I want to just say something to that, and that is that one of the things that Gracie told me, and this is a little piece of concrete, something that might help people in the audience dealing with anxiety, she told me that something that really helped her was a thing that Debbie, you did, and then you <laughs> had me do, and it, it kind of it worked for me, but it really worked for Gracie. That kind of therapy with the, what was that? The tapping and the what was? EMDR, EMDR. biofeedback, and yeah. we just continue to do everything and pray and breathe. Yeah, but I remember Gracie yeah. saying that really, really helped her anxiety. All right, I snuck in last two questions, so I got the first one. Uh, so, Gracie, I, you know, I'm a little starstruck. I've known your dad for over 30 <laughs> years. Uh, and so, um, you know, you're a composer, you're a movie star now. Uh, it's all good. Um, you flew thousands of miles. I remember talking to your dad before you guys took off. Um, and it struck me that you're on this continuous learning journey which I think is pretty awesome. And so now you're in the Big Apple, 
And so just things that maybe uh, that shocked you, now you're here. Um, things that you maybe thought before you came and now you're here. Things that kind of maybe said, wow, I didn't expect that. Yeah, I, well, first of all, I never, I never expected I would come to New York. Um, we flew one time after my injury, and I was, I was like, nope, uh, I'm happy in Santa Barbara. I don't need, I don't need to go anywhere. Um, but uh, I thought I would definitely regret it if I didn't come. And the first day here, I was like, thank you guys so much. For bringing here, for bringing me here, because um, there's so much that I would have missed missed out on, and I think um, well, I'm learning a lot of things, and uh, I think just looking off the Brook Brooklyn Bridge and Seeing, um, I, d I didn't really have any context for like what New York was really like. My mom might get mad at me for saying this, but like I thought that the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building was the same thing. Um, and they are just like a lot of things that I'm learning. And yeah, learning how to take a taxi. Um, learning just things that you're not allowed to do, like apparently take a map out in the subway because <laughs> my, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> according to my sister, yeah, there's just certain things that you just don't do in New York because you don't. We love it here, though. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, oh. I'm yeah. learning a lot. No matter what they say. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <coughs> Thank you. And if you want to accomplish something, you can do it. Just hearing, oh, thank you. Just hearing what you've said, but like your art and your music. Somebody else would have said, oh, so I can't do this now because of my physical disability, but you didn't do that. You found a way of doing it, and that definitely shows me what you're made of. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Last question over here. Hey, Gracie. It's Nick Lightning Gun. I want to thank you very much for finding me to this great movie. It made me emotional. You're a true beautiful person more than ever since I just saw that. And I got one question. You said in your movie you let anybody play your guitar. I would be honored and privileged if I could have one of your shows. Can I play on your guitars? Absolutely. And you could have your your have your pick on which one. She still has her collection of guitars. Yes. <laughs> I thank you all. I just want to add that as the national chair of SAG after performers with disabilities. Screen Actors Guild. I just want to welcome you to the SAG after a film appearance people that we will uh, I'll hopefully be able to introduce you to our Performers with Disabilities Committee at some point. Thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, SAG after um, uh, sponsors this festival, and we're we're excited to have them. Um, we have tomorrow your short film, um, a Critter a Critter Fable, um, Nick Lightning's uh, film as well. Um, so join us uh, tomorrow, starting at noon, for um, great movies all day. Next up here, the, me the, the blind man who did not want to see Titanic. Um, fabulous narrative. Do not miss it. Anita, is that right? Um, um, please join us for that and more. Um, to the folks at home, thank you for joining us as well. Please tell all your friends. Also, a big shout out since we're talking about uh, accessibility in the city. Accessible Go is our car sponsor and provides taxis through the city that are completely accessible. Um, you can call one with 311 or by going to their app. Thank you so much. Thank you for being thank here. You thank, you, thank you, Anita. Thank you. Have a good